Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, February 5th, 2015. And here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, campus cops gone wild. Why are so few held accountable? And the dangers of self-driving cars. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm a reptoid clone of John Wayne and Elvis, not of Bill Hicks, okay? Let's just get that clear. Well, police brutality continues to sweep the nation and has become an epidemic in our country. And unfortunately, this epidemic is now spreading into our nation's public schools. Seems like almost on a daily basis, we are getting reports of police officers who are assigned to these schools who end up abusing their power by abusing and assaulting school children and teenagers. How many times have we seen kids tased, pepper sprayed, beaten, thrown down, handcuffed, even very young school children handcuffed for misbehaving in class? It's all part of the police state indoctrination and conditioning of our nation's youth. Now, here's a report from Houston, Texas, where a high school student is suing his local school district after receiving a brutal beating with a baton by the school's campus cop. And a Houston area family is suing Pasadena ISD after they say a district police officer beat their son with a baton. The family says the boy suffered these injuries after he was hit 18 times. I asked him why was he being such an about him. Caesar says that sent the officer into a rage, beating him repeatedly with a baton, just like this one. All right there, just over and over again, up to here. Well, there you go. This 16-year-old high school student dared to talk back to the police, and he got his ass kicked. Don't talk back to the cops, or else. I mean, they hit this kid 18 times with a baton, and the cop obviously went completely ballistic, but when you know it, the police department and the school district, they didn't see it that way. In fact, they thought the cop acted appropriately and that the beating was justified. Now, earlier this week, we also reported on two other cases of campus cops gone wild. At a school in Baltimore, three students were initially charged with assault and suspended after a police officer attacked them with a baton and pepper spray. There's no excuse for this. The officer pushed Star against a wall. Her sister, also a student at the school, heard there was a fight. So she goes over there thinking there's another child, and she gets over there as officer. And um, she went over there to try to stop her. Next, Diamond arrived and appeared to shove the officer. The officer let go of Star and gave chase, pulling a baton and using it. Diamond was hit at least twice, it appears, including the blow from the baton that put that gash in her head. One of these girls was only 13 years old. She had to have 10 stitches in her head after that gutless cop basically smashed her face in with a metal baton. The other two girls, they were sprayed directly in the face with pepper spray. Isn't that nice? Meanwhile, in Louisville, Kentucky, a cop viciously attacked two kids, almost killed a 13-year-old boy. This is what happens when you cut in line, by the way. They put this 13-year-old kid in a chokehold, almost gave him brain damage. A Louisville police officer arrested after detectives say surveillance cameras caught him punching a teen at school and then placing another in a chokehold. Surveillance cameras were rolling in the school cafeteria during lunch when detectives say Hardin punched a 13-year-old in the face, who he believed had cut line. The blow knocked the teen to the floor. Hardin placed another 13-year-old in a chokehold, knocking him unconscious. A doctor who later examined the boy says he, quote, lost blood flow to the brain, resulting in an injury to the brain. I tell you what, you do that to one of my kids, I'll go vigilante on your ass. I mean, these cops obviously have some anger issues. A lot of these guys are on total power trips, and now they populate our nation's schools. And guess what else? The Department of Homeland Security, they're now giving them military supplies. 
LASD got something called an MRAP vehicle. It's a steel-plated, mine-resistant, ambush-proof tank designed to keep troops safe during an ambush on, say, something like the streets of Iraq. But really, is it going to come to a school campus near you? They've also received three grenade launchers, 61 fully automatic military rifles that have been converted to semi-automatic rifles. And we understand that those rifles are now being used in officer training. So the militarization of our nation's police department now extends into our public school system. I mean, you just heard the guy. They're now equipped with M16s. They have mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicles, AMRAPs, that were used in combat situations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, they're now patrolling the streets of America. And they're being utilized and installed in our schools. It's, it's completely out of control. And they say we're the conspiracy theorists when we say now might be the time to start homeschooling our children. Yeah, you think? The police state isn't coming. It's already here. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is it's hard. Even with diet and exercise because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals in addition to my diet and exercise were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, it's no secret that U.S.-born Americans now have fewer jobs than ever before. So why is it that presidential hopefuls and big corporations, why are they calling for even more foreigners to flood the job market? Well, here's Leanne McAdoo with a little story about a man named Jeb. As he makes his move toward a probable presidential run, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush is making it very clear where he stands on immigration. How do we create high sustained economic growth? And that's to shift away from family reunification being almost the sole driver of legal immigration to narrowing that to what every other country has, spouse and minor children, and dramatically expanding immigrants that are coming to work. But what Jeb Bush is not talking about is what are all the Americans going to do when there aren't any jobs? Even though there has been a working age population growth of 11 million people, fewer U.S. born Americans have jobs now than they did in 2007. This is according to federal data that was highlighted by the Center for Immigration Studies. Almost one in every two jobs that's been added since 2009 have gone to foreign born workers. 
Since November 2007, the number of working legal and illegal immigrants has risen by 2 million, while the number of Americans with jobs has fallen by 1.5 million. All of the net gain in employment since 2007 has gone to immigrants, legal and illegal. And the jobs transfer from Americans to immigrants has only accelerated since the economy bottomed out in 2009. Now, despite the fact that the entire U.S.-born working age population is five times greater than the entire immigrant population, foreign-born people have gained a nearly equal amount of jobs since January 2010. Now, clearly, this report highlights many companies' growing reliance on foreign migrant workers. And don't be fooled by this 5.6% unemployment rate that the current administration is really patting themselves on the back for. We've already reported how that figure is extremely misleading. If you are a person uh, who has just stopped looking for work entirely in the last four weeks because the job market is just such trash, you've just stopped entirely looking for work. If you are someone who's employed part-time or what they term severely underemployed, even if you're someone who makes a measly $20 a week, you are not considered to be unemployed by the Department of Labor. Right now, as many as 30 million Americans are either out of work or severely underemployed. So this 5.6% unemployment rate is not only extremely misleading, it is a big fat lie. Now, we know that Mark Zuckerberg has been a huge supporter for increasing H-1B work permits. He joined forces with top executives and founders from Google, Yahoo, and LinkedIn to launch Forward.us, which was an organization created to influence the immigration debate. Their argument is that there is a shortage of U.S. workers who are skilled in science and engineering, and thus we need to attract and keep the best and brightest foreign-born workers. So they're really pressuring the Obama administration to increase the amount of H-1B work permits. But critics are calling these claims extremely exaggerated. They say there are plenty of Americans who are skilled enough to take these jobs. But what they do say is that the H-1B program allows U.S. companies to train foreign workers and then outsource them abroad at lower wages. And of course, this hurts American workers. Some Southern California Edison IT workers are beyond furious over their H-1B replacements. They tell ComputerWorld.com that the H-1B program was supposed to be for projects and jobs that American workers could not fill. But now they say that they are being forced to train their replacements. And that's an argument for H-1B work permits that we're hearing again and again, that they're only going to be bringing people in who are highly skilled, who are able to do the jobs, that there aren't enough Americans that are there to do. But that's clearly not the case. And like a lot of the critics are saying, it's an opportunity for companies to outsource these jobs abroad and pay lower wages. Now, a witness at a House Judiciary Committee hearing on immigration enforcement says that there is an effort to facilitate immigration as a means to suppress wages. This is Temple University law professor Jan Ting. He told the committee this week, good luck with raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour for fast food workers because the president has already announced that he's going to add 5 million illegal immigrants to the legal workforce in 2015, and every employer knows that. And employers also know that under the new Affordable Care Act rules, they're not required to provide health insurance for those who are not U.S. citizens. So who do you think is going to look better on that job application? So obviously not only flooding the country with competition is going to be bad news for U.S. workers, it's also going to drive down wages. And if you think things are bad now, let's talk about all of the jobs that are going to be automated soon. Economists have no idea what to do with all of the Americans who are going to be out of work because their jobs are being replaced with robots. The coming jobs crisis is a national scandal and it is not a part of the immigration debate. You can't just promise an influx of foreigners that they can come here and pursue the American dream when for Americans, that dream is dead.
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Yes. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And finally tonight, here on InfoWars Nightly News, I'm going to defend a fellow Texan, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey is innocent, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. The latest out-of-control, bizarro political correctness isn't even leftist or right-wing. It shows the domestication of the human population in many industrialized areas that we see articles where someone's skinning a deer on their own property and the police are called because someone thinks an animal is being tortured. Well, Matthew McConaughey has a big 22,000-acre ranch uh, outside uh, Austin, Texas, and on the ranch they have cattle, but they also have white-tailed deer that are indigenous to the state. Now, white-tailed deer are so overpopulated that I've lived in four different houses in Austin, and sometimes there's 20, 30 deer in my front yard no matter where I live. They're eating all the foliage, they're starving to death. There are no natural predators like wolves or coyotes in the city or puma mountain lions. So they're everywhere. Now, the story here is that TMZ and others with straight faces are acting like Matthew McConaughey has done something with the headline, Matthew McConaughey ranch draws fire over trapped deer kills. And they go on to say that these are caged hunts because it's 22,000 acres of property. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm against caged hunting. That's when you have a rare bear or something and some rich fat guy, uh, and I've seen the videos on a golf cart, drives up, they let it out of a cage or shoot it in the cage. Yes, that's a caged hunt. White-tailed deer on a ranch being shot by hunters that come and get a deer lease is completely normal and standard, ladies and gentlemen. We have a 2,000-acre ranch that we've had uh, since 1829, a Mexican land grant. We couldn't keep it if we didn't lease it during the hunting season in the fall and winter to deer hunters. It's still hard to pay the property taxes even though we do that. And that's why McConaughey does it. It's mainly a cattle ranch. But here's the bigger disconnect. You go to the store, you buy beef, you buy chicken. Listen, I'm all for humane conditions. I don't want to eat something full of antibiotics and poison and some chicken that tries to peck itself to death because there's three million of them in one building covered mites. Let's talk about factory farming. Let's talk about sewage runoff from these feedlots. Texas is where our cows are out in big green pastures and have some of the best lives out there on record. Texas is where you can go and shoot a deer, process it, and, and it makes great sausage or great steaks. Uh, I've seen statistics as much as 20% of the meat donated to the homeless 
is deer meat. It's excellent. I got deer meat in my freezer right now. Had some last week. Had some deer sausage for breakfast. It's normal for humans to go out and hunt. That's a lot more normal than going and getting it at a supermarket and not thinking about where it came from. Whitetail deer are overpopulated. They're everywhere. The city of Austin pays thousands of dollars in some cases per deer to have them trapped and then helicoptered out to West Texas. You cannot make this up. Matthew McConaughey has a big ranch. It's not a caged ranch. It's not a caged hunt. Again, this shows a frightening disconnect and culture shock by folks growing up in these mega cities. They call it a canned hunt because the deer come to deer feeders to feed, and so it's a chance for you to then shoot them. Yes, that's what people have been doing for thousands of years to lure in their prey. Like when you're fishing, when you're trying to catch fish, you put a worm on the hook. No one calls that animal abuse. This is all about dehumanizing. They're trying to ban all over the U.S. in the name of carbon taxes, fireplaces, space heaters. Europe's already done it. This is about domesticating humanity. And this is about making normal human activity so bizarre and so shocking to the public that it's basically outlawed. That's why they've come out and said in Seattle, don't bring a brown bag to work because it could offend someone. No one had ever said brown bags were racist. That's why they're claiming if you don't support Obamacare, uh, you must be anti-black. What does that have to do with racism that I don't want to see insurance companies make a 47% increase in profit in the last year because it allows them to gouge people? But again, if they can dumb it down to just, oh, it's racist if you don't support Obamacare, they win. I am blown away by this. And people like PETA, they want to ban hunting of any type. They want to ban fishing. Uh, they want to ban on top of that having a domesticated pet. And they've had whistleblowers that have gone public from PETA, and they've been caught in court as well, pressuring their members to go get dogs at the shelter to then lethally inject them at their facility because they, quote, believe it should be illegal and that any domesticated animal uh, is a invasive species. These are anti-human eugenics cults who want to be able to speak for the animals and use their voting block clout to outvote the humans. And right now their eggs and their milk and their bodies are on plates inside this restaurant. And that is so unfair to them. It's, it's not, not food, it's violence. Please think of her name every time you see somebody's body on a plate. The modern animal rights movement, the modern environmental movement has hijacked people's legitimate concerns and taken over legitimate organizations. Even the founder of Greenpeace says that. It's about human control. It's about an authoritarian agenda of domination. These are people that want the moral high ground to boss us around and realize their control freak dreams. These people are cult members. We all live on this planet together. We need to take care of the earth. We need to be good stewards of the land. But prey animals like rabbits and deer and pheasant have always been hunted and always should be. Hunters don't go out and kill animals because they enjoy killing them. It's about the fire and cooking and, the, and going out and doing the hunting triggers, just like sex triggers instincts and is fulfilling. Hunting is something we've done forever. Gardening is something that we've done forever. Planting plants, getting in the soil, teaching children how to plant, watering plants is incredibly uh, fulfilling. I like gardening more than hunting. But when I was 10 years old out hunting for the first time, dove and quail and things, when I was deer hunting, it was very empowering. I mean, you get high off of it. And not because you're about to kill something, but because it's something that's in our genetics that we've been doing ever since we developed on this planet. So I can believe, I was about to say I can't believe, but I can believe that they're attacking him and calling him a horrible demon right now because they're cultists and they're so ignorant, they just expect their food from the grocery store. And they think it's weird that they're raising cattle and that they also make money off deer hunting when that's what everybody in Texas with land does or you go bankrupt. They're pointing at Texas that supplies much of the country's food and saying that it's bizarre and it's weird. That's how disconnected these people are. They are living a real life 
episode of Portlandia. So Matthew McConaughey, you're a great actor, and we're proud of you here in Texas. And uh, I'm sorry that a lot of control freaks are attacking you. Please don't apologize. Please don't back down, because this is all about making normal human activity weird and then finally outlawing it so we're all domesticated on the global plantation, on welfare, under globalist control. That's what the big corporations want, is no competition. The founder of the Rockefeller dynasty famously said, competition is a sin. Well, again, that's it for this Thursday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Darren McBreen was uh, hosting earlier, did a great job. Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central, with the Friday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And never forget, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, back in 2011, we wrote an article here at InfoWars talking about the progressive auto insurance dongle, the snapshot. Now, what that is, is a device you plug into your car that allows Progressive to see whether or not you are a safe driver. It monitors your speed, your braking habits, all of that good stuff, and it sends the information back to them and lets them know if they should lower your insurance or not. Well, here we are, 2015. And we now know, based off of Forbes and the Hacker News, that this is a device that can be easily hacked into. They can stop your brakes, accelerate your car, and do pretty much whatever. Now, we all know the incident that happened with my friend Michael Hastings, where his car just shot down the road, exploded, hit a tree. This is something that we live in now, a digital age. We are now at a point where almost every car is able to be hacked into because we have these computer systems inside it. Now they're trying to get you to plug a device into your car that will actually allow hackers to get into it. So just a few days after Michael Hastings died, I received in the mail from Progressive Auto Insurance, because that's who I had at the time, was this box that said the snapshot. Open it up and it says plug it in your car and get your insurance rate lowered. Well, I threw that away because I was disgusted by the fact of what just happened to my friend. I didn't trust anything being put into my car. But wonder what would happen if I hadn't thrown that away and I actually plugged that device into my car. Hey, what oh, you looking at? What's going on? Well, you look like you're here to save some money on your car insurance. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know what I should get. I was checking the snapshot thing out. What do you mean? What do you know about it? Well, basically, you just need to agree to let us track all of your movements. This will just easily plug into your car. We'll track your movements, upload it online. Probably the cloud will be really helpful, so we can just kind of see if you're a safe driver. Mm. Well, I, I saw in a Forbes article that these things could be hacked. Is, do you know anything about that? Forbes? Huh, I don't, I don't think so. Is it safe? Very safe and effective. Well, I guess I'll go with this. It seems like a good thing to try. You're making the right decision. Sweet. And sure enough, he had a big story on CIA corruption coming out. He had, uh, he was in contact with WikiLeaks and was about to do a big data dump. And the official WikiLeaks has come out and said they talked to him one hour before his car blew up. And he said, the FBI's after me. They're investigating me. Uh, we've got to hurry up and get this done. Well, they got you done. 
the police instantly said no foul play, which is always suspicious. The engine got blown down the road. Witnesses said the car caught on fire and blew up driving down the street. Yes, I have the target now. No, it isn't the ringleader. It's code name, Little Biggs. Yes, the target is in a vehicle. Do I have the go ahead to terminate? Roger, standing by for clearance. Roger that. Termination is a go. Cutting brakes. Disabling airbags. Accelerating car to a high speed. down, five to go. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.